Sup YouTube, Fushu Gaming Network, and welcome to something completely different. Yes, today I'm going to be teaching you how to make your own breakout game using pure Java. Now, we're not going to be using OpenGL, we're going to be using pure Java and the libraries included or built in in Java. So, I expect you guys to have a little bit of knowledge with Java, like, before you go to this tutorial I recommend you learn the basics of Java and for that I recommend you go to the New Boston tutorial uh, there's this guy on YouTube called the New Boston he has really good tutorials if you haven't checked him out and you want to learn basic Java check him out but if you have some knowledge with Java then uh, let's get right into it so first of all we want to hit new project I'm going to create a new project, and of course, because it is in Java, it is going to be called a Java project. Click next. And the project name. It doesn't matter what you name this, you can name this whatever you want. You can name this, like, you can name this whatever you want, but because it's a breakout game, it's preferable to use breakout YouTube. You don't have to put YouTube on the end, I'm just putting it. YouTube on the end because hey this is going on YouTube and I heard Java 1.7 is still in beta so we want to use 1.6 for now yeah, I'll use 1.6 for the whole thing probably and we hit finish first of all we need to create a class now before we create a class sorry about this we want to create a package now what is a package you're asking well, a package is, let me find a way to explain this. Well, sort of, we're, we're going to have lots of classes, one for the ball, like the window, or the main game, the key input, all that fun stuff. But anyway, we don't want to just leave all our classes, let's say, right in the front garden. We want all our classes to be in different folders, just so we can sort them out a little bit. So, I'm just going to type com.youtube.breakout, you can type this too, dot main. Now, this is going to be a package where our main, where our main classes will be, so our game and maybe a game state if we make one. So, but we'll see that a source folder name is empty, so we just want to browse, don't mind me. So, click breakout YouTube and select SRC. Okay, so we want to hit finish. And here we go, we created a new package. Oh, it's already been three minutes. Anyway, now we want to create our class. And we want to put it in the main package we just created, so because it's going to be our main class, like the base of our class. So com dot youtube dot breakout. You can end this whatever you want. It doesn't matter whatever you name it, but I'm just doing this because well, it's sort of hard to explain, but you know what I'm talking about. Okay, select SRC. And we want to name it game, you know, because this is going to be our main class. It's going to be a game. So, first of all, right off the bat, we want to extend something. Ex so we want to type, after our game, extends canvas now you're probably wondering what canvas is and uh, well we have to import it and why we import it is because I was saying that uh, there are classes in packages built into Java and canvas is one of them canvas just really allows to draw things on our screen like that or sort of make our screen anyway, and we want to implement want to implement runnable because we're going to have a game loop. So, but now we get an error. Type game must implement the inherited abstract method runnable dot run. Now, I'll show you sort of what this is. So, uh, I'm just going to. Uh, show you something. Let's just say there is our. 
let's just say we have a class. We have lo we have pretty much Java inside of Java, and Java is what makes our code compilable. So now, if we're so it's going to be our our pretty much like sort of Java inside Java thing controls Java. Sorry, I'm just I've done this thing before. It's going to check if implements. I'm just making this up, by the way. You don't have to type this. Implements dot runnable. So we want to check. So this is checking if we have implemented runnable. Then want to. Then I'm just making this up. Method dot add run. So it's going to have a run method because if it's runnable, it needs to have a run method. So we just want to hover over our game where it's underlined and add unimplemented methods. Now you don't have to. You can take this out. It's just to let. Uh, it's just to let the compiler know because when Java runs, it compiles it. Uh, we just want to let Java know that this is override and then this is automatically generated but we don't need it it's not going to affect our code it should they're just comments doesn't matter if we delete them they're like comments the thing I just there did there they're comments and if you want to create multiple lines well yeah then that's how you do it now I'm just showing you guys this so we want to create sort of our thread now what a thread is well it has to do with the runnable thing now thread makes us do multiple things at the same time and will help us create our game loop i'll explain our game loop after now i'm just going to type private thread thread now what we're doing here is creating a private thread and we're going to call it thread but we haven't actually made thread into an object we've just initialized it we haven't actually created our full thread yet see as i said your thread allows you to do multiple things at the same time so it'll handle our game loop it was gonna sort of like create our game loop and it'll gonna it's gonna start well pretty much just keep our game going and we also want to create a private boolean running i'm gonna set that if it's false because we're not running so hey let's make it false so now we want to create two methods public synchronized void start and we'll put brackets here and in spell synchronized properly sorry I'm sorry I'm a bad speller today there we go and we want to type here, and this method will run whenever our game starts. Whenever our game starts, this is just gonna. This method is going to run. So we want to type if running, then that's going to check if our game is running. If we put running there with if we can do running equal to true, but. It, we don't have to put it there. It can just be if running, and if we want to do if running equal to false, then we just put an exclamation there. It's like saying if an integer is not equal to 6, and then we do this. If int is not equal to 6, then do this. So, yeah, this is just threat security. We don't have to put this there, but this is just sort of security for our thread so in case running is is already equal to true for whatever reason you want to return and return is just get out of this method do not worry about whatever else is in this method just get out and the code will exit out of this method so if it's already running then we don't want to do the same thing all over again so just get it out of the so just get out of the method and never execute it again so now but if running isn't or I'm sorry if running is equal to false then it won't return so we can and it will skip this line of code it won't execute this return method and it'll keep going with our code 
or keep scanning down. So we want to, of course, because it has started, we want to set running equal to true. Oh, sort of running over time there. Now, then here is where we're going to create our thread. Now, our thread is equal to a new thread, and we want to put this in there. And we can give the thread our, a name anyway, so we can call it Game Loop. You don't have to give the thread a name, this is optional, but I like to give it a name, just in case. So thread is equal to new thread, so it's this and Game Loop. So we've created our thread, and uh, I'm just going to remove this for a second to show you. When I create an object, because Java is an object-oriented programming language, uh, I like to think of this little circle as the object, like this This circle is our glorious object and everything our object as is in here. I just like to think of the circle as the object for some reason. I don't know why, I just do. So we want to put this and put game loop. So anyway, you can name this whatever you want, it doesn't matter. So, sorry about this. So now we want to do uh, thread dot start because we've started our game but we haven't started our thread so we want to do thread dot start so now this is our start method now we want to create a stop method it, it, you don't really need to do a stop method but I like to just I don't know why oh I should have explained this a while ago uh, void means we're returning nothing. Well, when we're when we're not doing a void, it will be private. Let's say boolean private boolean starting. And if we do like a method like this, then we have to add a return statement and return. So we have to. Re return something if we're doing something like this but with void we don't have to return anything and if we actually if we actually return something we'll actually get an error because this is not supposed to be this is not supposed to be like a boolean method or anything we'll have to actually change this we'll have to actually change this to a boolean but we don't want that so this is going to be what happens when we stop, and because when we stop, running is not equal to true, so we want to set running equal to false. We want to set running equal to false. So now, just to add security like I did here, some thread security, we want to type if, remember what I said about the exclamation mark, exclamation mark means like sort of not, so if not running then we want to return because if we if running is already equal to false then what's the point of executing this method so as I scared if it as I said if it doesn't return then it'll go back to the code so then you want to go thread dot join and this is sort of the thing that stops our method and uh, what happens is that we get an error you know why because we get because thread dot there's this try and catch method it's because sometimes with the try and catch method you put this is pretty much called what is Java programmers called so <clears throat> this is what Java programmers sort of call risky code so now we want to try execute this risky code and if it doesn't work then we want to catch an interruption interrupted exception which is e which is like just exactly what we did with thread thread so we're creating an interruption interrupted exception called e we're just not setting it equal to anything because we don't need to and it's going to print stack trace which means just print the error that happens so anyway now we're going to go onto our run method now every method has to get called so we haven't when if we run this, we'll actually this actually this code won't actually execute because we need to tell we need to tell our program to execute this code. So 
it will be usually start something then then it will be stop but we don't actually call running you know why we don't we're not supposed to call running because if we implement runnable then it will actually automatically call this run method let's go back into like our java in java thing if implement dot runnable then we want to call run so remember the thing we implement and the th and the extends they're actually classes they're built in classes in they're built sorry built in classes into java so yeah so if we implement runnable then it's already going to call this run method no matter what so we're just going to type why we're going to type a while method and this while method will go forever unless we set running equal to false so every time it runs it's going to loop through this code over and over and over again whoops <laughs> so while we're running we just want to type system which is referring to the console dot out we want to get something out dot print line print line which means pretty much just create a new line every time we print something if you put print if you put print then it means it's it's still going to print it but that it's all going to be on the same line so so just print line just to make it a little bit easier i want to print out running so yeah oh i need a i'm so over time i'm gonna wrap this episode up uh next episode we're going to be going on to creating our main method and i'll explain that after and we're going to actually be creating our frame and then after that episode we're going to probably be creating um drawing pixels onto the screen then uh, we'll get into a lot of fun stuff so anyway if you enjoyed leave a like comment and subscribe and stay tuned for more tutorials like this i'll see you guys soon